TV weathermen and women are trained to handle all kinds of inclement situations, but what about a spider on a weather cam or a wisecracking co-anchor? Get your umbrella ready because these are the meteorologists who lost it on live TV. In May 2019, a tornado shredded the streets of Dayton, Ohio. Luckily, locals can't say the alarms weren't sounding, according to Newsweek, thanks to Fox 45's weatherman Jamie Simpson. All of this heavy rain is between you and the tornado. But not everyone was happy about it. Simpson's live report, made several hours before the tornadoes rushed through, cut in on an airing of The Bachelorette. Uh, I was just taking social media. We have viewers complaining already. Just go back to the show. No, we're not going back to the show, folks. Rather than ignore the social media fire, Simpson flipped out. I'm sick and tired of people complaining about this. Our job here is to keep people safe, and that is what we're going to do. He added, Some of you complain that this is all about my ego. Stop. Okay, just stop right now. It's not. The tornado ended up claiming one life, destroying a large part of central Ohio and injuring 12, according to Today. When Simpson's clip went viral, Dayton locals praised him for his dedication. Back in 2005, CNN weather reporter Chad Myers was explaining the situation surrounding Hurricane Katrina. But when anchor Carol Costello kept asking him to speak in words the average viewer could understand, Myers hulked out. Lower Chad, pressure, but Chad, Camille, Chad, but Cam let me Trans talk, Carol. Translate that for us. Evidently, Myers didn't like the situation. Mean. Well, if you would let me talk. By the end, Myers smiled and claimed that he was just having fun, but it sure didn't look like it. All right, Carol. thank you, Chad. All right, just having fun with you this morning. <laughs> To be fair, The Week points out that this footage was filmed and broadcast at 4.30 a.m., and that's one heck of an hour to keep it together on camera. A lot of people find the mere sight of a spider too much to bear, including global news meteorologist Christy Gordon, who freaked out on live TV when a giant arachnid was projected right over her head. That's how, oh my gosh, that was creepy! As you can imagine, her co-workers erupted in hysterical delight. <laughs> No, I hate it! I can't stand it! Although she was clearly a good sport, it took her a moment to shake off the heebie-jeebies. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Seriously? I am so sorry! Back when everybody was bonding over the miserable 2018 cold snap, Grand Rapids meteorologist Gary Frank was clearly tired of everyone complaining, according to the Detroit News. After reporting day in and day out on Antarctic-style conditions, Frank finally snapped. Well, because you guys are dragging me down. You guys keep... Well, every time I get done with the seven-day, you guys are like, oh, gosh. He continued, every time. Doesn't matter what time I come on. 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, and then you expect me to be chipper for five straight hours. To be honest, that does sound like a horrible gig. Here's a 60. I don't know if that's good enough for you guys. Get excited. Maybe I'll disappoint you with the seven-day here in a few minutes. CNN reported on WITI-TV's Angelica Duria, who got stuck standing in a Milwaukee snowstorm for an entire morning, reporting on weather that clearly wasn't going to improve. But as the lunch hour finally approached, Duria's good spirits melted away and she finally lit up the screen. I have been here since, what, 3.30 this morning. I'm exhausted. I've run out of things to say. It is <laughs> snowing and it sucks here. Not surprisingly, everyone back in the studio applauded. <laughs> Australian weather reporter Steve Jacobs once met a curious pelican named Marnie while reporting from the zoo. Brushes the south. Oh, ah! Ah! <laughs> you love it. To be fair to Marnie, the pelican's pecking attack seemed more playful than aggressive, but that didn't make it any less hilarious. I gotta be mentally scarred. <laughs> Even Jacobs couldn't stop laughing. Oh, I gotta sit down. Woo! An animal's attack. There's a beauty never expected. <laughs> my butt taken off my belly. In 2017, Fox 2 weather reporter Derek Kevra got so infuriated by people who didn't properly clean the snow off their cars that he filmed an entire sequence explaining how to do it. Night. This must be a really hard concept for people to understand. Kevra proceeded to sarcastically demonstrate how to use a snow brush and ice scraper. You're going to begin with a generic left to right swipe. Then, a couple inches below that, you'll swipe back. He added, and it's the scientific swiping motion that you will use not only on the sides, but the back and all the way around 360 degrees. The raging fury is so clear that it paints a magnificent portrait of what happens when you finally push a weatherman too far. 
Now I know, I know, it seems like a lot, but I promise if you follow those simple steps, you too will be able to clear the snow off of your car. If you're Boston's Weather Channel meteorologist James Cantori, the most glorious weather phenomenon of all is when lightning strikes during a snowstorm. During a televised segment in 2015, Cantori got so psyched about this bizarre phenomenon that he screamed, Oh yes! 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 We got it, baby! According to the Washington Post, Cantori is well known throughout the weather community for his passion for so-called thunder snow. Cantori told the Boston Globe it's, quote, kind of like two seasons coming together. We got it! Yes! Listen to that! Listen to that! Oh, baby! For his sake and the sake of his fans, hopefully another rocking thunder snow happens again soon. Back in 2010, according to the BBC, weatherman Thomas Schaffernacker got caught in a rather awkward snafu when cameras switched over a second too fast, revealing him brandishing a prominent middle finger. Direct and provide all the detail you could possibly want. I've just seen Thomas Schaffernacker <laughs> preparing uh, for it, so I'm not in top. <laughs> ah! Schaffernacker tried to cover it up, but no one was convinced. Every now and then, there's always one mistake. That was it. A spokesman for the BBC quickly issued an apology, but this wasn't the first time that Schaffernacker's sense of humor got him into trouble. He previously had to apologize for calling a region, quote, Nowheresville during a 2007 segment. And in 2009, he accidentally mispronounced the phrase muddy sight as a swear word. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.